Afrofuturism challenges black the black body to dare to be audacious. Black History in Drag. Hi, my name is Godex Nora Files, and my pronouns are they, them, she, him. I am so happy to be back to do Black History in Drag. Thank you so much to the Migrations Rat for funding this. It is incredible to be able to do work and get paid for it. And so today I'm going to talk about Afrofuturism and I'm going to talk about it in a nutshell. It is a super extensive topic and after this video, please go out and find out so much more and even read the books that I'm going to mention to you today. So let's get into it. But first, I want you to think about what stories can be told? Who can tell those stories? What narratives have the right to get out there? Who are we as human beings? What do we choose to engage in and what do we not? What do our imaginations play in our own lives? These questions make up the framework of Afrofuturism. So what is Afrofuturism? Afrofuturism is a device that combines technology, pre-colonial African existences on the grand continent of Africa, and it uses these things to examine the present in order to formulate imaginaries of what Black people might look like or might behave like or might emote like in our future. Simply put, Afrofuturism is a response to colonialism, segregation, racism, and it is a way to affirm oneself and one's own existence in a Black body. Because of these byproducts of colonialism, Black people were left feeling disjointed with their sense of connection to who they are. When you know exactly where you come from, there's a certain amount of confidence, esteem, validation, affirmation that comes along with it. And because you know who you are, the possibilities of who you can become can all just kind of come washing in like a waterfall. A sister to Afrofuturism is mundane Afrofuturism, which is a, I guess, practice or uh, ideology that examines whiteness and black stereotypes and promotes the power of the black person and the black imagination to transcend the everyday. Simply put, mundane Afrofuturism really focuses on the everyday experience of what a black person goes through and completely just transcends that into the imagination in order to speculate on how we might be able to exist from a day to day. That brings us to our next question. What does it mean for black people to have a future? Noted writer and Afrofuturist Greg Tate said that black people live the alienation that white science fiction writers can only imagine. This statement struck me because throughout the journey of a person with a black body, alienation and community exist simultaneously, especially as we move in and out of white dominated spaces and come to terms with our identities as queer trans people. A key part of Afrofuturism is speculative fiction. Speculative fiction is an umbrella term that encompasses imaginative ideas that are not based in reality, such as futurism, the spiritual and the paranormal, and other imaginative ideas. The function of this form of fiction is to explore history and the ways of resistance and hope through the black body as a vessel to explore and tell these stories. I think it's always important when we're talking about the device of speculative fiction to really understand intersectionality. Within it, we talk about where gender intersect with blackness and where gender and blackness intersect with spirituality. A lot of Afrofuturism holds and references remnants of pre-colonial African religions such as Yoruba, even Santeria, which was an extension of Yoruba. The use of speculative fiction is a way to look to the future for different narratives, to think about Afrofuturism as not only as an aesthetic, 
but a methodology for healing. It intersects by looking at all the Black cultures around the world and also understanding the individuality of the Black cultures that exist around the world. And the writer of the book, Afrofuturism, Itasha L. Womack, states that technology is also seen as a race because technology is a human invention. It is a construct. If we're able to recognize that race is a technology, then we're understanding that this technology was a device to promote violence and to promote law. Afrofuturism is a key tool for resilience. It acts as the intersection between the present and the future. In Afrofuturism, time is not linear and it is not episodic. Time can exist simultaneously with the future, with the past, with the present, and with other dimensions. Kindred, written by Octavia Butler, Dana, the protagonist, travels through both space and time. What happens in the past still have a lasting effect in her future, which becomes her present. The book Black Quantum Futurism by Moore Mother, which is a duo consisting of Kame Ayewa and Rashida Phillips, both queer Black women based in Philadelphia. Black Quantum Futurism speaks about time as a construct, time as something that was in embedded into Black bodies in order to uphold the system of capitalism. Time was synchronized into the Black body by use of the whip, the clock, the sound of a crow, not a crow, of a rooster in the morning. These seemingly quotidian things that existed by happenstance became mechanisms to forcefully congeal the Black body with time to become objects for production. And someone who I feel is not really coined as an Afrofuturist, which should be, is Marsha P. Johnson. During her time, she defied all the laws of what a Black trans femme person was allowed to do. She was a mother. She was someone who provided care to the community. She organized a space called STAR for queer and trans youth to find housing and shelter and food. Back in this time of Marsha P. Johnson, it did not exist. She was able to transform the future by having the audacity to change her present. Audre Lorde, who came to Berlin and helped to bring together the Afro-German community along with May Aim, who was a noted writer of that time. And now there's a beautiful, strong, ever-present, audacious, um, loud, intelligent Afro-German community. Parliament Funkadelic, please look them up. George Clinton, okay. Their key cause was to put Black people in a position where nobody had ever imagined a Black person could exist in. And that way, they would be able to change people's concepts of what a Black person could do. So maybe one day you'll be able to see a Black person in the White House. Obama. When you look at Star Trek back in the 1960s, this was the first time you saw a representation of a Black astrophysicist in space on the Starfleet Enterprise being a badass, Lieutenant Uhura. And of course, I have to mention Sun Ra. He believed that he was born on Saturn and um, he used the depictions of ancient Egypt into his craft to transform the way black bodies were seen. In the 1980s, Muriel Tremise created a game like this. Freedom, Rebels in the Darkness, set in her home in Martinique. In the game, you are one of four slaves who have to use your skill to strategize on how to over and on how to fucking build a rebellion. It's amazing. How, like, come on y'all, this is the 1980s and a video game like this is, is being made and it was silenced because I mean like, we're barely just uncovering this recently within the last decade. This is a key way of 
exploring Afrofuturism, using technology as a way to tell narratives, to tell stories that are not being told. That concludes my video of Black History and Drag, Afrofuturism edition. Please definitely like, share, follow, and save. Please also do some research so you know more about Afrofuturism. Look up the paintings of Kehinde Wiley. Look up Sulwe, a children's book written by Lupita Nyong'o. Look up the Alvin Ailey Dance Company, which is a dance company which champions black dancers. Thank you so much for watching and black history and have drag. a great day! Black Thank you for watching! Black history and drag.